In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an intelligent document processing system that can automatically handle your invoices and job applications using OCR and AI. This isn't just basic text extraction. You'll see how we can have AI analyze these documents and take smart actions automatically. Now, I want to give you a quick demo of the system and show you how it works exactly within the back end and what it's going to be doing. So in this particular use case, we're going to be having a document and particularly an invoice. And we're going to be giving it to the back end of our system using N8N. We're going to have it look at all the data, analyze it, extract it, and parse that data. And then what we want to do in particular is send me a notification. So I'm just going to have it send me a text message and notify me that we have a new invoice and remind me when it's needing to be paid. So you can imagine there's going to be a bunch of different use cases and obviously it'll look different as to what your company or what you are trying to do internally and what might uh, you know be most beneficial to you. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into my folder. I'm just gonna grab the download that I already have of this invoice. I'm gonna plop it right in. As soon as this gets uploaded in the back end, it's going to trigger my automation to start running. And it's then going to, you know, as I mentioned, it's going to analyze, parse the data and use OCR to give us an output that we are looking for. Okay, so it's been about 30 seconds. And as you can see on my phone, I have a message from this AI agent saying a handyman service invoice detailing services rendered their costs and payment instructions for a total of $378 due. Now we're gonna add a lot more to this text and we can have it tell us when it's due by and any other parameters that might be necessary for us. And I want to actually give you another use case. And in this particular one, we're going to be using a employment application. So you can imagine if you're a recruiting or staffing agency and you guys are manually just writing down all of your applications or having your applicants write down these manually, but you want to store them online. So instead of manually typing this in and having an assistant do that for you, you can use AI and more specifically OCR to extract this in the background for you. So what we're just going to quickly do, we're going to come into our folder again. We're going to grab the, um, I believe it was this file which was the job application. Now we're going to upload this. Now that it's uploaded in here, our system's automatically running in the back end. And in a few seconds, we should be getting a text message just notifying us that this document is uploaded. And here's the results that we got from analyzing and parsing the data from the document. And just a few seconds later, we now have another text from this agent. So this time it's saying the data is an employment application for Jane Doe, detailing her contact information and work history, primarily in baking roles. So if we go back to the image, we can see that the applicant did have a name of Jane Doe. Obviously this is all dummy data, but you get the point. So it's pretty cool because there's a lot of different use cases that you can take. And I just ended up going with something simple and having it text me, but you can imagine all the different possibilities that could be very useful for your company and your internal operations. So now that we got the demo out of the way, I wanted to show you how you can actually build this out for yourself or for your company or maybe even if you're trying to sell this as a solution to other business owners. Now, the software and the resources that we're going to be using for this use case, we're going to be using NNN, of course, Llama Cloud, and Google Drive. So, I mean, it could take a few different shapes and forms of all the different resources that you might need to use, but this is just what I found to be the most practical. So Llama Cloud is basically going to be our OCR. And if you're not familiar with OCR, OCR is essentially allowing us to analyze documents and parse all the information from what we're, you know, what the image is actually looking like. So if you recall from just a minute ago, we were looking at a job application. I'll actually pull it up. We were looking at a job application like this. It's looking at the name, the phone number, street address. This was all written with pen and paper. So if we wanted to do invoices, whether that's written um, you know, and drafted online, or if it's written on paper, it doesn't matter. We can analyze the image, the PDF, whatever it is. Okay. So that explains what OCR is and Llama Cloud is just a vehicle that allows us to deploy an API or get their API to use to generate the documents for us. Now, what I started using in particular is Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is where we're going to be uploading our files. Hypothetically, anytime we upload a file into this Google Drive, it's going to trigger this automation to start running and it's going to look at that document, analyze it, and then start parsing it from Llama Cloud. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't want to get into that too much because it's a, you know, just a menial part of this system. So we're using a watch, um, watch Google Drive's file created. So anytime a file is created, it starts the automation. Simple stuff. Now I just used a limit. I only wanted to grab the most recent and just one file. So this is why I'm using that limit right here. Nothing uh, 
too crazy to cover there. Next up, we're going to be having to download the file. Now we want to get it into this output where it's just showing data. So the files that we use, it was just a pretty small file. As you can see, it was invoice.png right here as the output when we download it. And here you can see the matching, matching ID. Now, all we really did here is we tried to find the file. We found it by ID. So if you just query the search, go to, let me find which ID it was. I believe it was, okay, this ID right here. So under spaces, so you can collapse all this other stuff. And something you could also do that might be additive to you is you can do a set field, actually edit field. And we could take this ID that we're getting from right here and put it into here. So I'm grabbing this ID and we're just going to set the value as, um, actually go right here. And we set the name as file ID. So if we test this out, we can use this information to later reference. So it's easier to identify later down the line if we ever need to grab the file ID ever again. Okay, so let's try using that right here. So I'm just gonna drag over that file ID. So hopefully that explains well enough what using the edit fields and setting manual parameters does. So all we do is just download. So if I test this step, we should be able to grab that file ID. As you can see, we're just getting a binary um, data output. It shows some specific information about it. It's a PNG image, shows some other stuff. You can check it out in JSON or a table format or even a schema. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit into the nitty gritty. So we're going to be using HTTP request to actually call the services within Llama Cloud. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to go into Llama Cloud. First thing you want to do is sign up for an account. It's free. I have used everything I've done so far. I haven't had to pay. As you can see, I'm already 75 out of 1,000 credits per day, which is quite a bit. So first thing we want to do is find out how we can actually call these requests. So once we open up the API documentation, I'm just going to go search here and I'm going to find their parsing options. So if we go down below, this is where we're going to find all the different headers and other parameters that we're going to have to basically copy and paste into our HTTP request. Now, if we go down below, um, I suppose this could work. So we're going to be using this within Python and here's the curl right here. So first thing you'll see is we want to use a post request and I've already selected it right here. So instead of using a get, obviously we want to post the data into this Llama cloud so that we can have it query some, some of our searches for us. Um, okay, so if I come up to here, all I'm going to do is just copy this and I will just literally just paste it right in here. Whoops. So you're going to paste that right in there. I'll leave authentication off. So I usually put my API key down below and I'll explain all that in just a second. So we'll come down here. We don't have to include any send query parameters. We will include sending of headers. So you might ask why I'm including all this weird, confusing looking data. Well, as you can see down below, we see these H's, these three different H's. These are representing headers. Now under these headers, we have the name and we have the value. Um, you know, there might be some nuance to the keys and everything. Um, so sometimes they're referred to as keys or values, um, depends. So we have the accept and we have application slash JSON. So the name accept right here, I'm just going to copy that. I'm gonna paste that into the name right here. For the value, it's going to be application slash JSON. You can see right here, content type, or I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the value application slash JSON. Next one is content type, and the value is multi-part slash form data. Lastly, we have the author authorization, bearer, API key. So put these in one by one. I put in my authorization right here, and then I put bearer in my API key. So to how to actually get your API key from this particular software right here. Um, I might have to back up a little bit. And if I go to, let's see here. I wanna come back to the dashboard. Okay, now we're in the dashboard. We'll see API keys. All you have to do is generate a new API key. You know, I just called mine and it doesn't really matter. But as soon as you generate one, you can copy and paste yours right into here. So mine's starting with LLX. Then we included the last header and the last value for that. Now for the send body, it gives us specific data into 
Um, let me go back to the documentation to actually show you how I figure out, you know, what information I have to include in everything. So, okay. So it says form right here. And if I come back here, this just means we're going to have to use body content type as form dash data. Now for the parameters, um, you could use ChatGPT or Claude to help you figure out and put the missing pieces together to basically analyze this entire thing. So you can literally just copy all of this, put it into ChatGPT and have it help you input all the necessary parameters to run this request. But just to break it down, what I did, I did an n binary file. So that's calling specifically the data file right here. The name is just going to be file and the input data field name, as you can see on the left here, it's just called data. Then parameter type we have to call. So this took a few times to actually figure out, but we had to call a premium mode. And there's a few different channels that you can call within Llama Cloud specifically. And the one that is going to give you the best outputs, it's going to be premium mode. So make sure to set this value as true because it's going to give you the best outputs. So now that we have this piece of data, so this was the invoice, we're going to test this step and it should give us our ID. Okay, so we have our ID right here. We have a status as pending, so it's not done yet. But, you know, if we just stop here, you might ask, how can you actually get this data? So as nice as it would be to get the output and have it, you know, stored back in here, whenever it is finished, um, you know, instead of pending, it'll be a success. What we have to actually do is make another call to this API. And how I do that is if we come down here, it says check the status of the parsing job. So this is going to tell us if it's a success or not and whether it's done. And we could also get the results. So what we're going to do is we're first going to check the status once again, and then we're going to get the results. First, to start off with status, we're going to copy this and basically just plop it into the URL endpoint right here. You know, you could probably just duplicate this and put it here. Make sure you're uh, selecting the method as get instead of post. That'll really be the only other thing that you're going to be changing about this. We're going to be keeping the headers and we could remove the body from this. Okay, so if I test this again, it should be done by now because it's been like a minute. Okay, so now it says success, but we want to run this autonomously. So sometimes it might take five to 10 seconds to maybe even 30 seconds. So what we have to do is we have to continuously run this. Otherwise it's going to stop once if it hits pending and it's not going to continue the automation. So if we want it to continue while it's pending. So what I did in particular is I just included a wait function. So once I run the status, we do have as a, as a success right now, but if I run this again and then I run this, you can see as the status is pending. So we're going to have to run this switch with this wait. Okay. So it's not going to run both of these for some reason, but we're going to run a switch. If the status is equal to success, it's going to continue this automation. If it's equal to pending, it's going to go to this wait feature and it's going to wait 10 seconds and then try running the status request once again. So it's already been 10 seconds, so we could probably try running this now and we will see what we get. Okay, so now it's a success and now we can actually get the status of our parse. So if we come back into here, we get the results in Markdown. We're just going to copy this right here and we're going to go to the HTTP request and we're just going to paste it right into here. I'm actually going to execute the previous nodes. It might, okay, it does come up. But if I go to the schema, we can literally just drag our JSON ID from the switch right here and just put it right there. So now that we have that in there, if I scroll to the bottom, I'm including the send headers. I'm only giving it the authorization and the API key and nothing else. You know, all the other information is not necessary. Make sure you're using a get request and you could tell and confirm that by down here within the API documentation, it says get request right there. Now, little transparency, this is going to put it in Markdown format and you might not want it to put it in this specific structure. So what you can do is actually use ChatGPT. So let me go ahead and test this workflow out once again. And let's see what we're getting for now. And we can make any necessary changes that we would like. And I could show you how you can have this agent take any actions that you would like. So now it's waiting 10 seconds. It's basically just going to you know, be checking if it's a success or not. So right now it's still pending. So it's going to make one more run through, hopefully. And then it should be a success. Okay, so now it did succeed. It's running through the status. 
and the output that we're going to be getting, it looks something like this. So this one in particular, this was the invoice. So if we open up the invoice right here, it'll look like this. So if we look for something like your company Inc, 1234 Company Street, we should see that over here. So yeah, that's one of the first things that comes up. Now we want to actually make this information readable in something that's legible for us. So what I did, and once again, this is going to look completely different and it should look completely different based on your scenario and what you need this agent to do. What I said is you are to summarize and explain the data I'm receiving so I can be prepared for my meeting. Keep it as succinct and concise as possible. I also need you to give me another separate output that uh, gives me what this was about in one to two sentences. Make sure to stringify your outputs. When I say stringify my outputs, it's going to give me an output like this. So here's the summary. Here's the purpose. If I weren't to string my, string, stringify my outputs and I didn't output it as JSON, it'll look something like this. So everything is just kind of combined and sloppy and a little bit harder to read. So it's very important that we're going to be outputting this as JSON. So it's going to have completely different schemas. Now, I doubt this will apply to you where you want it to send you a text. So what I would re recommend is starting to use the AI agents. And if you check out my previous videos, you can see how you can actually build and implement some really interesting and awesome stuff with this. What we can do is use a tools agent. So now that we have this information and we have this invoice, we can have it, you know, if we want to, we can have it search the internet with the invoice or, I mean, that probably wouldn't make much sense, but we could probably qualify them, search their LinkedIn for the job applicant and find more information about them. So we can have, you know, SERP AI, SERP API find some information if I just give it a specific prompt. So I say, you're an assistant and to determine which action to take to either, can't spot right now, qualify to either go down the qualifying route and use SERP API or to create a Slack message. Okay, so the agent, it's going to be using some, it's going to look at the distinctions of the input that it's receiving and it's going to decide, um, let me also include a Slack tool. So this is just hypothetically going to be sending a message. I'm not gonna connect all of this, any of this for now, but this is just all completely hypothetical and trying to inspire some ideas of all the different use cases that you can use this for. So the AI agent, it's going to determine if it needs to qualify the person. So if it's receiving a invoice, it'll decide, okay, well, there's no reason for me to qualify an invoice that is rendered useless and doesn't make sense. So in this case, it's going to go on the route of Slack and you can provide this a bunch of different logic and reasoning, which is very important when it comes to prompting your agents and having them decide which actions you need it to take. But that's essentially it for this build. I wanted to show you this uh, really cool platform that I found. I think Llama Cloud is one of the best for using OCR search. I know ChatGPT um, offers something like analyzing images. Um, so you can use analyze image right here if you would like, but Llama Cloud is, I, from what I found and used, I think it's by far the best. But anyways, I hope you guys found some value in this video. And if you're looking for this template and you want to implement something like this straight into your own system, then join my new community. Link is down below in the description. And also if you're a business owner looking to drive revenue and create operational leverage in your business, then you can apply to work with us down below in the description. Anyways, please like down below because it really helps me out and I will see you in the next video.